peace and mercy all. Um, a few announcements, but first I'd like to take a moment to to consider. Now, uh, one of the awkward things about uh, us filming this, and something I'm looking forward to uh, not being the case once we're back on uh, Sunday regularly, is you know, the theologian's job is to have the Bible in one hand and a newspaper in another. And unfortunately, uh, that means that by the time you all are hearing this, the newspaper will have changed quite a bit. But uh, I've seen from a lot of my Asian American friends that they're just really hurting from the attack that happened in Atlanta just a day or so ago. And, you know, now the, the suspect has said, no, 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 this wasn't an anti-Asian thing, it was an anti-women thing. But nonetheless, uh, whoever it is that is, is worried and scared and feels endangered, it is well worth taking a moment to just pray for, for them. So let us take a moment to pray for all those who are in fear at this time. Lord God, please bring safety to communities who are in fear. Please be kind to all who feel as if kindness has left them and their community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, moving on to announcements. Um, so, uh, our March Holy Communion gathering will happen on March 28th, which is also Palm Sunday. So, we'll be meeting both at 10 a.m. in the parking lot and then again at 11 a.m. in the parking lot. Now, palms will be available during both these times as well as they'll be sitting out in a bucket ready for everybody throughout the day. So uh, please sign up uh, so we know the number of people who will be showing up. And also, please come, even if you don't come for Holy Communion, to get your palms. Additionally, please help us to update our directory. So fill out the information that you want to appear in the directory, including all phone numbers and email addresses that you would like to appear. Now, this needs to be completed no later than March 24th. Uh, if you, you don't update information, the current information we have is what we'll use. If you don't wish to appear in the directory anymore, please let us know and we'll remove you. Then finally, we are going to be gathering on a Sunday for worship. So this is exciting stuff. Uh, we'll be gathering for worship at the Lebanon Township Memorial Park Pavilion for Easter Sunday at 10 a.m. We're planning to live stream the service on Facebook Live as well and record it too so we can put it up on YouTube afterwards. So on one hand, please show up on, on Easter uh, in person as you're able, but also know that if for any reason you aren't able to make that, we'll also be making it available electronically as well. So, so that's some, some hopeful good news there. And with that, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship using the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Merciful Lord, God of promise, you know us through and through. Empower us with your Holy Spirit to confess those sins we have intended, and come to recognize those sins we have hid from ourselves so that we might receive your forgiveness and live into the new covenant that you have made with us. Amen. Amen. God of promise, too often we embrace violence and twist religion to reflect our heart, not yours. Too often we hoard blessings when you insist they are for the entire earth. Too often we take rules put in place for the betterment of all and use them to enslave others. Too often, we prefer poison to promise. Too often, we declare your love is broken and an external thing to earn. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Show us your unbroken love and see sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved people of the promise, through the flood waters, there is a new creation. God's blessing nourishes the whole earth. Out of slavery, there is given a way to live together.
Confronted by the desert of sin, God makes a way anyhow. In Christ, an internal, unbreakable covenant was made with you. I therefore declare to you, by his authority, the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days says the Lord, I will put my law in them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for, for he, he is, is gracious, gracious and, and merciful, merciful, slow to anger and abounding, and abounding in steadfast love. love. The Holy Gospel according to John the twelfth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just that, a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, 
And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for, for this reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. loves you. God loves you too. So can you believe it? We've been going through the season of Lent and for these five weeks we've been running into different covenants and all the while we've been remembering that that first covenant that we talked about, the covenant that God made with Noah and all the earth. And today I have another um, another origami figure for you all. So this is a lion. I know it looks a little bit like a dog, but, uh, but you'll, you'll notice that it has a mane that's going down there. And uh, So this is another creature that God made a covenant with. God is in relationship with. And that's what we've been talking about these five weeks. We've been talking about the various relationships that God makes with God's people and with all of the earth. And I want you all to know that this back and forth we've been doing, God loves you, God loves you too, that centers, that focuses us on the main point of these relationships, these covenants, these agreements, and these promises that God's been making with various people. And the center of it all is that God loves us. God loves us so much, and I want you all to know that, and no matter the situation, no matter what's going on in the world, you can trust that one promise to be true, that God loves you. With that, let us pray. Lord God, thank you for the many and myriad relationships that you make with your people. Thank you for the promises, the covenants that you continue to uphold. Lord, please be kind to us all and help us to be in relationship with you and with our neighbor, to love you and love our neighbor as ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, peace, and mercy to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. Amen. So here we are, the fifth Sunday in Lent, the end of this sermon series on covenants. The point at which, if you've been following along with your bingo card, you can perhaps say, Bingo! Right? It's uh, the point where every single 
uh, one of those spaces should be filled by the end of this sermon. Now we've seen how Noah and all the earth came to terms with the God who put down the bow, how Abraham was met by a God who entered into the messy particularity of his peculiar family. How Moses and the people escaped from slavery into freedom because the God of liberty and commandment heard their cry. And we also hear, heard that strange story about how those same people who cried out to God for freedom then cried out against God because freedom is hard. And now today we read Jeremiah's promise of a new covenant. Let us pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, may the preacher decrease that you might increase. Amen. And now we go for this long jump forward from Moses to Jeremiah because there's a whole history sitting there. So after entering the promised land, the people conquer and assimilate in near equal measure all those who were in the land. Then the twelve tribes unify under Saul and then under David. A coalition of chieftains transform into a kingdom. And God promises King David a continual seat of power. And with that comes the palace under David and the temple under David's son Solomon. And then soon enough, that fragile peace of two generations shattered. And the ten tribes, so ten of the twelve tribes, the northern tribes, separated out and became the northern kingdom of Israel. And those remaining two tribes in the south end up being called Jerusalem, with their capital in Jerusalem. Later, the Assyrians, the, the great and terrible power of the, the East at the time, swoop in and conquer and then disperse the ten tribes. Then, 130-some years later, so from 722 to 586, the Babylonians break the walls of Jerusalem and raise the city, including the temple and the palace, these things that seem to be promised by God. They carry off the royal household and the priests and anyone with much influence or who can read, and they take them off into exile in Babylon. Right, that was big old history squished down into just a couple of paragraphs. So that was the historical situation that we find Jeremiah today. Faced with his people in exile, Exile, the defining moment for all of those who look back to Moses and Abraham and Noah, all those who take seriously holy writ have to wrestle with the question of exile. Exile, an experience painted as a songless space in the Psalms, in fact, there's that famed psalm that's where they sing, can we sing a song of Zion by the rivers of Babylon in a foreign land on mouths when we try our mouths go dry as cotton. Our only song is destruction. Exile, which Jeremiah paints says incurable pain, wailing of women who have lost their children and their husbands. Horror all around. Exile, from which both the prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah extract ever so carefully hope. Isaiah responds to this horror by saying that those famed lines, comfort, oh comfort my people. And Jeremiah writes chapters 30 and 31, which will end up being called the comfort scroll that we read today. These promises, they promise, these prophets do, that the yoke of captivity will be broken, 
that the devourer, in this case Babylon, shall be devoured, that the plunderer shall be plundered, that there's a restoration at hand. The exile in Babylon, these prophets maintain, is like the exile, pardon the exodus rather, in Egypt, right? God heard the people's cry and brought them through the perils of the Red Sea. And so too from Babylon, God will bring them through the dangerous desert by way of a safe highway. God will do a new saving act that will be similar to the act that Moses experienced when they, the people escaped out of Egypt. God will do a new saving act, and more still. The problem, after all, with the Exodus, as we saw last week and the week before that, was that the tablets can literally and figuratively be broken, and the people's urges to complain like we read last week with the snake incident. Those things all cloud and cover the promises of God. That the Exodus covenant was breakable, conditional, transactional, and external. So let's go one more time. Breakable, conditional, transactional, and external. But this new salvation and the new relationship that will follow Isaiah promises, will be internal, relational, absolute, and resilient. In other words, unbreakable. So, internal, relational, absolute, and resilient. This new thing God will do, it will be a remembering. I love the word remembering, because when you go back to it, you realize what it is, right? It's putting together again that which was broken, taking pieces and members and putting them back together into a body. So remembering, God will remember the relationship. In the Exodus, God remembered the people's sins and the people forgot God's promises. But in this new covenant, that will be reversed. Instead, God will forget the people's sins and the people will remember their God. I think it's a really clever thing that Jeremiah does there. This, this new reconception, remembering of what God does when God acts in a salvific way. And in time, the people do return to the promised land. And yet it's a strange kind of return. It doesn't fully measure up with the hope. We, in fact, read that uh, the new temple, yes, is, is rebuilt, but it's so uninspiring that the old folk actually weep when they see it constructed. So imagine that. I mean, this is one of the, the, the stranger moments in Scripture. You have essentially the ribbon-cutting ceremony, right? And added all those who saw the previous temple just floods of tears because it's not the same. It's not what they remembered. For that matter, Judah is a vassal state and they have no king, let alone the promised Davidic one. The people are divided and sin does not cease. And many wonder after a while, are we still in exile even when we're home? Can we sing the songs of Zion atop Mount Zion, or is it still singing destruction? Because there's something off, something wrong going on here. It just doesn't quite work. And in fact, we end up seeing a wide variety of reform movements trying to kind of recapture and re-spark these promises that Isaiah and Jeremiah give. So that's, that's where we're at, right? And that's where we, we end up, where we're going to do one more time where we systematize those, those six features of a covenant. So strangeness, problem, character, sign, blessing, and reordering, right? So first off, there's the simple strangeness of uh, the, the fact that we are vaulted past the bulk of Hebrew history. Reading Jeremiah's promises... 
without a sense of what's happened in the interim can be confusing and it can confuse our understanding what this new covenant God is promising is all about. Then there's the problem. God is sensitive and sensible enough to realize that his people need more than simply a reboot, a new Moses. The remembering of God's people needs to be something more. It needs to be putting it all back together after the trauma of Babylon. It needs to be more than breakable tablets and complaining people. Then there's the facet of God's character that is revealed in this covenant. God describes himself here and as well in other places in Hebrew scripture as a spurned spouse. One who yearns deeply for right relationship. Imagine that. God as spouse yearning for right relationship. That's a unique character of God. A unique way to get an in into the mind of God, into the heart of God. Then there's the sign. This new covenant replaces stone tablets with heart etchings, an unforgettable covenant. Then there's blessing. The people will be brought out of exile, yeah, sure, but more vitally, they shall know the Lord and, they shall, and God shall know their sins no more. Then there's this reordering. What? A relationship, reconciled spouses, a new covenant, an internal, relational, absolute, unbreakable relationship. Praise God. And then finally, there's our question that we always ask, right? What does this mean for us? The so what question. And at least for us, for us Christians, this promise anticipates the signs of water and bread and wine, baptism and communion instituted by our Lord along with the command to love one another. All that is packed in Monday Thursday that is swiftly arriving here. These things for us, remember the body of Christ. God in flesh and risen, God with and God for us. They're all, they all point to God's humanity, right? That, that, that image of a, a spouse in right relationship, that God actually being this, this human figure that, that that all is kind of being pointed to there. God etched, in fact, in the heart of humanity. God etched in flesh and etched in blood. The Word of God, the heart, the body, the Word of God showing up as Emmanuel, God with us among the people. Jesus Christ is for us the answer to the question, how shall we know the Lord and how shall God know our sins no more? Jesus is, as that famous uh, Eucharistic prayer makes plain, God is the invisible God made visible. We can know the Lord by knowing Jesus. For that matter, in Jesus we find forgiveness and we find mercy. God looks upon his son and forgets our failings and our faults. So that's what I have for you all in this, this sermon series, these sets of covenants, these relational promises God makes. And I hope that if, if we get nothing else, that we do get the the basic message that the, the children have been getting week after week, that there is this, this holy relationship, this holy love that is for all of us, that God, God has made plain in a variety of ways. 
that God is a relational God, a loving God, that there is a, a love between God and God's creation and God and God's people in particular that is, is astonishing and is continually renewed. And we can thank God for that. Amen. And now let us tell that story of God's love that we tell every time we re recite the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. You wash us through and through and remember our sin no more. Make your church a community of forgiveness throughout the world. Give your people courage to forgive. Through them, show the world new possibilities. Bless ministries of repentance and reconciliation. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. You fill the earth from tiny grains of wheat to the mighty thunder with your presence, and you call us to attend to your will for all creation. Grant weather that prepares the soil for seeds, protect all from violent storms, flooding, and wildfires. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. You promise to write your law on our hearts, guide citizens throughout the world, to shape communities that reflect your mercy, justice, and peace, and give them creativity and protect them in their work for the welfare of all, especially Sammy, Daniel, Joshua, Marshall, Nicholas, Cooper, Dustin, and Devon. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Restore the joy of all who need to know your presence, those who are lonely or feel unforgivable, those who need healing of mind or body, those who are dying, and all who grieve, especially Lance, Irwin, Bill, Setsuko, Bonnie, Walter, Robert, Julia, Dave, Clarence, Beth, Sarah, and Rich. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Jesus calls us to follow him in life and death. Empower this congregation in discipleship. Equip children and teachers in Sunday school, confirmation, and learning ministries. Give us your truth and wisdom and teach us to follow Jesus. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. In the cross of Christ, your name is glorified. We praise you for those who have given us words to worship you, especially Thomas Cranmer. 
with all those who have died in Christ, especially Nina. Bring us into life everlasting. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.